Tunku Imran is the second son of His Royal Highness Almarhum Tuanku Jaffa, the late ruler of the state of Negeri Sembilan, as well as Malaysia's 10th king. Tunku Imran has a perfect blend of both law and sports, having graduated with an LLB Honours Degree from the University of Nottingham in 1970, and where I was called to the Honourable Society of Grey's Inn in 1971. Thereafter, he was Malaysia's national squash champion in 1973, as well as having toured the Malaysian cricket team in 1971. Tunku Imran is the, pre is the present president of the Olympic Council of Malaysia, also a member of the management board of National Sports Council of Malaysia, founding chairman of the Foundation for Malaysian Sporting Excellence, Sport Excel, patron of the Malaysian Cricket Association, where he was also president from 1990 to uh, 2011, as well as the patron of the Taekwondo Malaysia, of which he was also president from the years 2010 to 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with uh, great honour that we would like to give a warm applause to welcome to the stage our keynote speaker, His Royal Highness Tunku Tan Sri Imran. very much for that uh, kind words, uh, uh, MC and uh, um, Richard. Um, it's good to understand that, uh, to know that uh, Everton is almost as old as a slango club. <laughs> uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, it's great to be up here this morning. Um, I know that uh, they've introduced me as uh, the first national squash champion. Uh, I might not look it now, but um, 25 kilos ago I was uh, in good shape. Uh, but today um, you know, we want to talk about uh, arbitration in sports, sports law, and uh, particularly in the, in the Malaysian context. Um, as you know, I'm, as, and, and as the MC uh, has just mentioned, uh, my background a long time ago uh, was law. I never practiced, uh, by the way, um, but uh, it's, it's still there, up, up there. And of course, sport has been uh, my passion, and, and, it, and it's the one thing that I've done most of my life, uh, not only uh, playing it, but also being part of the administration of, um, of sport uh, in squash. I was the first uh, founder, secretary, of SRAM, the Squash Records Association of Malaysia, 1972. Uh, I became the first national champion in 1973, was accused of forming the association in order that, in order that I could become the first national champion <laughs> because they said there's no other squash players in the country, but I assure you I didn't win from as number one seed, I won as number five seed, uh, and then I did become the president of um, SRAM, became the world president of uh, squash, and, and squash has just moved on and is now, as you know, uh, one of the most um, popular sports in Malaysia, but also one, one of the sports that achieves for Malaysia at the international level. In cricket, uh, not quite so successful, uh, but it's again a team sport which I love. Um, but uh, I was on the International Cricket Council for about 11 years, um, helping the associate members of um, the world body. Those are non-test playing countries. I don't know whether many of you know about cricket. Um, you have full members which are only play, that play test matches and then you've got the others. And I always just tell the president of the International Cricket Council, you know, you've got your, you, know you, are, you are in charge of 10, 10 countries. I said, I've got the other 86 under me. Because uh, uh, you know, it was also you know the the full members and then the associates and affiliates the also runs. But that's that's another story about cricket. I'm happy to talk cricket during the coffee break and at lunch with anyone about how I feel that uh, it's actually a, a, an international federation that's actually going nowhere at the moment. Sorry, Paul. I know it's one of your um, great uh, as the world champions of cricket. Australia uh, are there. Um, but uh, okay, what about uh, you know sport today, and, and, and why are we talking about uh, you know sports and arbitration? Uh, sport today is huge 
uh, international business. I know this, uh, all of you know that. Lots of money. Last weekend, we saw two guys uh, fighting in Las Vegas in a boxing ring, taking away 200 million US dollars between them. I mean, that's, that is obscene, I think, quite honestly. Uh, and, um, you know, for, for uh, you know, one hour's work. But um, that's, that's, that's what modern sport is. And Wimbledon just recently announced uh, that this year's um, prize money is again another record. You know, every year Wimbledon brings out more, more prize money, and it is it is again going to be the biggest prize money in in tennis by a long, long way. Um, and so, when money gets involved, you know what happens. Uh, disputes happen. Uh, bad hats. Come, come into play, and uh, you know we, we, one has to be very, very careful about how um, you know you then manage the sport in order to be able then to uh, ensure that it is it is properly governed, properly regulated. Um, and even today, I think we find that the the, the number of sports disputes are, are getting uh, greater and greater in number. And all sorts of uh, disputes now. You know, you've got um, in, in, in sort of areas like uh, national sports associations, uh, it's, it's to do with selection, for instance, uh, player selection. Uh, you have, uh, in terms of international sport, you have eligibility. People, countries are actually cheating, you know, in, in terms of nationality in order to win, to win gold medals at, at, at Olympics, for instance. You have the perennial doping issue. That's cheating. People uh, uh, are doping themselves in order to, to, to win. Uh, you have the, the match fixing, which, uh, and cricket was, uh, and football. And don't, don't think, I think many of you may not know, but tennis, is, is, has a huge problem in, 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 in match fixing. Um, and, but it's not just match fixing. I think a lot of people don't understand that when you talk about match fixing, it's not necessarily you know, fixing the whole match that you lo win or lose, because um, you, know, you can't, uh, you know, some, the, the betters often don't want to um, wait too long for a result. I always remember the story of this, uh, you know, rickshaw driver in Ipoh comes to watch the cricket match on the Ipoh Padang. Uh, Ipoh, by the way, for those visitors, is a, is a city in the north, and the Padang is the is the is the field. And he sees this, uh, you know, Indian under the tree watching, and says, "You know what's happening? It's a cricket match. Is it interesting? Oh, very interesting." So after the first day, he uh, he says, uh, "Who won?" He says, "No, no, no. It goes on tomorrow." Okay, he comes again the second day, it goes on tomorrow again. So that after the third day, it finally ends and everyone is clapping. And the Chinaman asks the Indian, says, so who won? He says, neither. You know, it was a draw. He says, hiya, how can you wait three days to place a bet, for God's sake? So uh, anyway, so what betting in, in the modern context is all about is spot betting, you know, where you, you know, someone does three double faults in tennis or someone's going to lose the fourth game, or uh, some bowler's going to do three wides, you know, and, and these are the, and, or two no balls in the particular over, you know, and, and this is the sort of thing that, that, that's happening for people uh, to, 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 earn, to, earn, to earn money. And did you know that in the Malaysian Open, I mean, the recent WTA series, uh, women, the number one seed has never got through, has never won uh, the final, has never won the match, which is, you know, to me, very odd. But anyway, there are also so many other, uh, other areas where, you know, disputes and where, where you know, the, the law has to come into play. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you, you now have um, event managers who are going to uh, national um, sports associations to organize um, events, tournaments, 
and uh, take them to the cleaners. And this is, I, I have so many um, complaints and so many uh, areas which I can, I, I can, I can give you. Um, so, you know, there, there is a need for, for, for um, legal uh, redress, let's put it that way. Um, but thankfully, uh, in Malaysia, this is not so prevalent as it is internationally. One of the reasons is because Malaysian, in the Malaysian context, uh, we really don't have very much professional sport. I think football is the most uh, uh, developed. Uh, players are, 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 are professional uh, and, and, uh, you know, there's, and there's more money in football than, than any other sport uh, in, in this country. Uh, but uh, it's getting there. Uh, I think many, uh, you'll find that um, a lot of the hockey players are full-time and, and, and in the old, in the, you know, in, in, in the old um, uh, term, when in the Olympics, they would not be able to play in the Olympics uh, because, you know, they're full-time and they're paid to play hockey. Uh, if you remember, in the good old days, you you know, Olympics was you had to be amateur, and they didn't allow the professionals. Uh, but now, you know, the, the Olympics is looking for the best player in the world or the best team in the world, irregardless of whether they are amateur, or regardless of whether they are amateur or or, or professional. Um, and um, so uh, we, um, you know, we 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 have this situation now where in Malaysia it, 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 we're getting there and there is therefore a need to, to have some sort of uh, legal uh, redress for, for people in, in sport. Um, we have the law courts, of course, um, at today. And, um, but uh, um, the courts, we know, this, we know it's time-consuming. Most of you here are, lo are lawyers and and in, in working in Malaysia, one is time consuming for uh, for a lot of the sports, whether you're a national association or someone in a club or or even an athlete or a, or a manager or a, an official within the organisation. You, you know, you really can't afford to even go to court because of the fact that um, the you know the, the cost uh, is is. Is, is mainly uh, beyond people's uh, ability to, to pay. And, uh, and, and, and often, because of the time it takes, you know, what you are going for, the redress that you are going for is, is over. You know, you could be suing some president, you know, over some you know, abuse of, of power or whatever, and by the time you get the result, that, 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 that president's already lost his election, you're into probably the next one after that, the third president. And, and you know, you might, have, you might win the battle in the law courts, but, you've, you know, you, 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 you've just won the Pyrrhic victory and, and you know, you, in, and probably lost the war. So uh, that, that, that is another issue about uh, going to um, the, the courts. And uh, the other one, of course, is which, which, is, which is important, is that the judges most of the judges do not really understand sport and um, in, in many of these cases it, it, you, you, know, you, you really have to have quite a good knowledge of how sport is structured and you know who is involved reasons why people are there uh, and, and I've been in, you know, in a, a number of uh, court cases as witness in, in a lot of court and um, you know sometimes you get from the, the bench some very sort of naive questions, which, you know, if you if you had a um, a judge or a arbitrator that uh, knew in about sport, they wouldn't even ask those questions. And so you you know you basically can cut to the chase. Um, so this is why, as Richard mentioned, in early 80s, uh, the Court of Arbitration um, was founded. Uh, this is an idea by the then um, president, Juan Antonio Samaranch. Uh, in 1981, he had a, an idea that, uh, you know, we, sport needed, you know, to have a, a, a separate uh, forum uh, to, or the tribunal of some sort to be able to um, resolve disputes. And 
so um, CAS was created in 1984 as the Court of Arbitration uh, for Sport, um, bankrolled by the International Olympic Committee. Uh, this uh, went on until 1994, when it became obvious after one or two cases and some uh, some noting by the judges in the federal court of, of Switzerland, which is the final uh, in a arbiter, uh, the final court and, and under Swiss jurisdiction, where they said that uh, the question is is CAS really independent? And so it was decided to form ICAS, International Council of Arbitration for Sport, as the governing body or the governing council for CAS. Uh, and then the, the stakeholders all had a, 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 an input into, the, um, I, into ICAS. So, so the constitution now of ICAS, and I was a member of ICAS from 2004 to 2014, there are four appointed by the IOC, four appointed by the International Federations, four appointed by National Olympic Committees, four from the athletes, the international athletes, and four independent uh, jurists and judges and uh, well-known um, uh, uh, you know, people in the legal fraternity who, who, who are, are no sport. So that's, that is the council. Um, you know, uh, that, that runs uh, CAS. And um, it's based in Lausanne in Switzerland. Um, there are two, uh, and Richard just mentioned it, there are two uh, jurisdictions which they don't, they, they don't really have very much jurisdiction over, and that is uh, New York, USA, and Australia, because they almost, they form their own uh, structure in, in, in those uh, two countries. But um, what happened on the deset, on the um, additional uh, alternative hearing center of which we are here is that um, during one uh, ICAS meeting, the Secretary General was going on and on about how few, how so few cases are coming from Africa and Asia, and I said. Do you know why? He, he said, well, because obviously you guys are much more peaceful than the, you know, the Europeans. I said, no, not true. He said, it's too expensive to bring a case to Lausanne. I said, you know, we've got to have an uh, alternative hearing center. So they did form uh, alternative hearing centers. The first was opened in Shanghai. Uh, then we have one in Cairo. Uh, we have one in Abu Dhabi, and then KL uh, is the fourth one in this in this region. So um, KL RCA is an official center where you we can hear court of arbitration for sport for sport cases. And and uh, you know we had a I mean there was my colleague on ICAS then was a, a man from Singapore, and he was telling about the attributes of Singapore and how it's a center. You know, and it's, it's uh, communications are, are, are fantastic. And I sort of reminded the CAS uh, board the, or the council and said, excuse me, one of the reasons we want to establish, uh, 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 you know, an alternative sharing site is cost. And I said, I think you'll find that Singapore costs, if you check it out properly, are uh, probably four or five times more than Malaysian's costs, KL's costs. So we got it in the end. Uh, so, anyway, uh, it's here, and uh, as Richard says, Dr. Sundra Raju is you know, very keen to now move to the next step. Okay, just not hearing these international uh, cases here, but what do we do here for the national, um, you know, sport nationally? Um, we in Olympic Council of Malaysia, we've been trying to establish an, an alternative uh, dispute uh, resolution process, and we actually had it. Uh, it was set up by our then um, chairman of our uh, legal committee, uh, Dr. Roy Rajasingham, uh, and uh, we had the whole process there. We had, uh, you know, the, the the opportunity for disputes to be had in OCM. 
we had a, a panel of arbitrators, sports arbitrators, and it was all there. But we had one case only, one case in about four or five years. And the reason is that, very simple, one is not seen to be independent. Because OCM is, is, uh, is, is uh, like, like most sports bodies, it's structured in a way where, you know, you have uh, people elected, you know, from the national associations and, and you inevitably will have on the board uh, people who've come from various sports, different sports. And then they felt that the fact that we were doing the appointing, although we, we, we said that we will appoint independent arbitrators, that to, uh, you know, really was not good enough for, I think, those that wanted to go to get their disputes resolved. And then there was still the fact that under the uh, Sports Act, you know, the, you know of the, the Minister of Sport could, could still be a final arbit arbiter for, for disputes. Um, so this is uh, something that uh, we had to overcome. So when this, uh, this um, KLRCA got this uh, appointment as um, the alternative hearing uh, center for CAS, then uh, Dr. Sundar and I said, why don't we make you the uh, you know the the what the repository I suppose of 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 Malaysians um, sports disputes uh, and um, you know you run it and uh, you 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 sort of uh, are independent and and you do it and he took the ball uh, together with his team and and now we have uh, a more or less uh, a, a draft. Uh, and a way forward whereby we, we, will, we are going to have a Malaysian sports uh, arbitration tribunal, uh, MSAT, and, um, and that is, uh, you know, once we agree uh, the rules, the procedures, and, and, and the, you know, how it all works, we'll be going to the, to the, to the Minister of Sport and to try and get that as part of the Sports Act, so that all sports in Malaysia, if they have a dispute, come to MSAT, not the courts, you know, and then and 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 then we will have a look at you know where the appeals go, etc. Now, the, initially, I think we're looking at the appeals going actually to to CAS itself. Uh, and but we'll have to see how uh, you know government look at that because, as you know, governments tend to want to have control over you know <laughs> over these sort of things. But I, I think for for us, you know, you, you, we will have established total independence. If you have a national dispute, I don't think anyone would then be able to complain that there was the the you know, the results are unfair. You know, if it has gone firstly to a ind totally independent uh, organization who selected their arbitrators, you know, uh, independently and then all trained arbitrators uh, at first instance. And then the appeal has goes to a, 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 an international body. Uh, and I think that is, a, um, you know, a great, a great way forward. And I think later on we're, gonna, we're going to uh, discuss in a little bit more detail with Paul and, 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 and Richard, you know, uh, some of the details of this. But uh, uh, the, 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 the important thing is that, uh, you know, we finally could have, you know, in, you know in, in the near future, near future is anywhere between 12 months and, you know, two years, uh, uh, an actual Malaysian sports arbitration tribunal, a, a real court, which can uh, save uh, a lot of time uh, and a lot of money uh, and, and really be a model for other uh, national sports associations, national Olympic committees uh, to follow. And, 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 and I really um, you know, thank, thank uh, KLRCA. Uh, uh, Farish here has been, uh, done probably most of the work. Uh, but uh, certainly you here and his team 
have done a, a magnificent job in really getting it this far. Uh, we in uh, OCM, you know, will do our part in, 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 in talking to government, talking to our own uh, constituents, uh, our national sports associations. Two weeks ago, we had a, 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 a small seminar and I took a, a, a straw poll and I asked everyone, okay, does everyone agree that we should go forward with this uh, project? And it was unanimous. Um, Paul laughed. He says, well, you know, you almost forced them to put off their hands. And I said, no, no, it, was, it wasn't that. But, you know, every, everyone agreed that this, is a, this was the way forward. And this is something for uh, Malaysian sport, um, you know, uh, very exciting. Um, I think uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, I think if we can today uh, really, um, you know, get uh, and, and, and find some sort of resolution is, um, you know, okay, you know, you, we all agree the, the basic principles, how it should go. Uh, we'd like to hear actually from many of you, you know, where you, you feel, um, you know, is, is going to be a problem. Some of you from overseas, it would be very useful to hear from you, you know, where is it that uh, this can break down, you know, it, uh, uh, and are we going down the right, you know, the, the right way? Are we doing it the right way? Because let's, let's face it, you know, we don't want a, a situation where, you know, it, it, it falls flat on its face. Uh, I think, uh, you know, so the Minister of Sport, you know, being a, a politician and a, and, a, and a man who has a great ambition uh, in, in Malaysian politics uh, would probably look on this as one of his legacies. And, uh, you know, you don't like to see a legacy that falls flat on its face, you know, immediately after you've left the, the scene. You know, it's, it's something that's going to be ongoing. It's going to be something that's going to you know, last, uh, unlike, as I mentioned, the OCM's, uh, you know, process, which, which basically never worked. But when you, if you look at the rules, uh, the structure, it's very similar to a, a, a cash-type uh, situation. So it'll be good to hear from the panelists, from uh, many of you, are we doing it right? Are we, are we, are we going in the right direction? Uh, and, um, you know, if there's uh, uh, some of you that have been involved, um, tell us how uh, you know, we, we, we should be, you know, overcome some of these issues that obviously we will face when we try and put this type of, uh, you know, project um, before um, government, uh, before the sports uh, public, uh, etc. One of the, uh, one of the um, uh, things, of course, that's going to come up is, um, you know, cost and, uh, okay, arbitrators, uh, you know, charged, you know, what do you want of the charges? I think the initial um, intention is that uh, where there is, it's, it's, it's commercial, it'll be, you know, normal um, commercial arbitration charges uh, will, be, will be charged. Uh, but if it's... Um, you know, uh, a sports uh, dispute, um, not commercial, then uh, there's going to be an element uh, of pro bono in the fee. Uh, it, no one will be doing it for free, but uh, there'll, there'll be a, a, a maximum uh, charge of something per day or whatever. So that's something that uh, we, you know, we're working through and uh, something I believe that, uh, you know, has to happen. I think uh, there has to be some element of national service in, 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 in what we're trying to do. Uh, I think if you, uh, many of the people in the sports world, you know, have done, you know, national service for many, many years. You know, I've done national service for 40 whatever years. Uh, you know, never earned a single cent from sport, but I love it, putting everything back into it. And I hope that some of the arbitrators will also feel that way. Uh, and, and, and try and get, you know, sport back, you know, on track, you know, and, and, and really, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, build something that is uh, commendable and admirable and, and that people will, will uh, follow and, and, and look at Malaysia as being a pioneer uh, in this area. 
Uh, KLRCA has also uh, promised to uh, agreed uh, to administer uh, the whole uh, MSAT uh, at their cost. Uh, they'll provide the rooms. They'll provide the, the administration uh, behind it. Uh, and that they said if there's any any charge, it's going to be a, a relatively small charge you know, for for their, their facilities. And we're very grateful that we actually do have a partner uh, in, in this project. And, and I hope that, you know, together uh, we can achieve what, 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 what we're trying to, trying to do. Uh, you know, the, obviously, um, the two uh, elements that, uh, that, that, that really needs to happen now is we've got the, we've got the project, we've got more or less what, what we're looking at. It's the buy-in from the sporting family, you know, the national sports associations, the members of OCM, and, you know, they, they have to agree that, yeah, this is, this, they will, you know, utilize, uh, you know, this new uh, um, organization for um, disputes resolution. Uh, and then the, the, the second most important one is persuading government that uh, this is, you know, the way forward for sport. Uh, this is the way forward for, you know, saving money all around, saving uh, the the Malaysian uh, courts uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, time as well, and uh, and and also uh, ensuring that. The, the athletes, the officials, uh, the people in the sporting world get uh, uh, get justice, you know, at uh, at, at a good price, at, at, or cheaply and also quickly. And I think that's what that what the uh, it objective is all about, and fairly, of course. So thank you for that. Uh, very briefly is, uh, is is what I have to introduce to you. Uh, I'd like to thank once again KLRCA for uh, organizing uh, this conference. Uh, I'd also like to thank all of you here present uh, for being here, and I look forward to uh, you know, further listening to many of you and, and your views. Uh, thank you very much.